good afternoon I'll just make sure everything's in order I hope it is it's a sad day for me 20th of January my husband Donovan Heron died this day as mass ended at Our Lady of Fatima Roman Catholic Church Ochevius where we lived and worked from 2009 till the day he died sad he should be alive and I should be gone really. <laughs> the age of difference, he was younger than me. Yeah, sad. Rest in peace, Donovan. So I'm now going to read Day 20, Bible in One Year. I'll be reading from Genesis 37, 38 of Genesis, Psalm 20. Matthew 10 verses 16 to 33 invoke the Holy Spirit to take control and bless everyone who's listening in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen a reading from Genesis 37 but Jacob settled in the land where his father had stayed the land of Canaan, the story of Joseph, Joseph and his brothers. This is the story of Joseph. Joseph was 17 years old. As he was young, he was 17 and he was shepherding the flock with his brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah, and Joseph <coughs> brought his father bad reports about them. Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other sons, for he was the son of his old age, and he had a decorated tunic made for him. We used to call it a different name, didn't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. But his brothers, seeing how much more his father loved him than all his other sons, came to hate him so much that they could not say a civil word to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he repeated it to his brothers. He then hated him more than ever. Listen, he said, to the dream I had. We were binding sheaves in the field when my shield suddenly rose and stood upright and then your sheaves gathered round and bowed to my sheaf. So you want to be king over us, his brothers retorted. You want to lord it over us. And they hated him even more on account of his dreams and of what he said. He had another dream which he recounted to his brothers. Look, I've had another dream, he said. There were the sun, the moon, and eleven stars bowing down to me, he told his father and brothers. And his father scolded him, a fine dream to have. Now oh, all of us then, myself, your mother, and your brothers, to come and bow to the ground before you? His brothers held it against him. But... His father pondered the matter. Joseph sold by his brothers. His brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. Then Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers are with the flock at Shechem, aren't they? <coughs> Come, I'm going to send you to them. I am ready, he replied. He said to him, Go and see how your brothers and the flock are doing, and bring me word. He sent him from the valley of Hebron, and Joseph arrived at Shechem. A man found him wandering in the countryside and asked him, What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers, he replied. Please tell me where they are pasturing their flock. The man answered, they have moved on from here. Indeed, I heard them say, Let us go to Dotton. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dotton. 
they saw him coming in the distance, and before he reached them, they made a plot to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to one another. Come on, let us kill him now and throw him down one of the storage wells. We can say that some wild animal has devoured him. Then we shall see what becomes of his dreams. But Reuben heard, and he saved him from their clutches. We must not take his life, he said. Shed no blood, said Reuben to them. Throw him down the well out in the desert, but do not kill him yourselves, intending to save him from them and to restore him to his father. So when Joseph reached his brothers, they pulled off his tunic, which he was wearing, and catching hold of him, threw him into the well. The well was empty with no water in it. They then sat down to eat. Looking up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites who were coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum tragosanth, balsam and resin, which they were taking to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What do we gain by killing our brother and covering up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, then we shall not have laid hands on him ourselves. After all, he is our brother and our own flesh. His brothers agreed. Now some Midianite merchants were passing and they pulled Joseph out of the well. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And these men took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben went back to the well, there was no sign of Joseph. Tearing his clothes, he went back to his brothers. The boy has gone. He said, what am I going to do? They took Joseph's tunic and slaughtered a goat, dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent off the decorated tunic and had it taken to their father with the message. This is what we have found. Do you recognize it as your son's tunic or not? He recognized it and cried. My son's tunic. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph has been torn to pieces. Tearing his clothes and putting sackcloth round his waist, Jacob mourned his son for many days. All his sons and daughters tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will go down to Sheol in mourning and join my son. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, one of the Pharaoh's officials and commander of the guard. The word of the Lord. Genesis 38, the story of Judah and Tamar. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> I have to have a sip. I've got phlegm on my chest that won't move. The cold weather makes the phlegm increase. <coughs> Excuse me. It affects my breathing. <coughs> it happened at about that time that Judah left his brothers to go down and settle with a certain Adullamite called Hira. There Judah saw the daughter of a Canaanite called Shua. He made her his wife and slept with her. She conceived and gave birth to a son whom she named Ur. She conceived again and gave birth to a son whom she named Onan. Yet again, she gave birth to a son whom she named Shelah. 
She was at Chezib when she gave birth to him. Judah took a wife for his firstborn Ur, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, offended Yahweh, and Yahweh killed him. Then Judah said to Onan, Take your brother's wife and do your duty as her brother-in-law to maintain your brother's line. But Onan, knowing that the line would not count as his, spilt his seed on the ground every time he slept with his brother's wife to avoid providing offspring for his brother. What he did was offensive to Yahweh, who killed him too. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Go home as a widow to your father until my son Shelah grows up. For he was thinking, He must not die like his brothers. So Tamar went home to her father. A long time passed, and then Shua's daughter, the wife of Judah, died. After Judah had been comforted, he went up to Timnah for the shearing of his sheep. He and his friend Hera, the Adolamite, when Tamar was told, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah for the shearing of his sheep. She changed out of her widow's clothes, wrapped a veil around her to disguise herself, and sat down at the entrance to Enaim, which is on the way to Timnah, for she saw that although Sheila was grown up, she had not been given to him as his wife. Judah, seeing her, took her for a prostitute, since her face was veiled. Going up to her on the road, he said, Here, let me sleep with you. He did not know she was his daughter-in-law. What will you give me for sleeping with you? She asked. I'll send you a kid from the flock, he said. Agreed, if you give me a pledge until you send it, she replied. What pledge shall I give you? He asked. Your seal and cord and the staff you're holding, she replied. He gave them to her and slept with her, and she conceived. By him. Then she got up and left him, and taking off her veil, resumed her widow's weeds. Judah sent the kid to his friend the Adullamite to recover the pledge from the woman, but he did not find her. He inquired from the men of the place, Where is the prostitute who was by the roadside at Inain? There has been no prostitute there, they answered. Returning to Judah, he said, I did not find her. What is more, the men of the place told me there had been no prostitute there. Let her keep the things, Judah said, or we shall become a laughing stock. At least I sent her this kid, even though you did not find her. About three months later, Judah was told, Your daughter-in-law has played the harlot. Furthermore, she's pregnant as a result of her misconduct. Bring her out, Judah ordered, and let her be burned alive. But as she was being led off, she sent word to her father-in-law. It was the owner of these who made me pregnant. Please verify, she said, whose seal and cord and staff these are. Judah recognized them and said, she was right and I was wrong. Since I did not give her my son Sheila, he had no further intercourse with her. When the time came for her confinement, there were twins in her womb. 
During the delivery, one of them put out a hand and the midwife caught it and tied a scarlet thread to it, indicating that this was the first to arrive. Whereupon he drew back his hand and out came his brother. Then she said, what a breach you've opened for yourself. So he was named Perez. <coughs> then his brother came out with a scarlet thread on his hand. So he was named Zira, the word of the Lord. Psalm 20, prayer for the king. May Yahweh answer you in time of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary, give you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and delight in your burnt offerings. May he grant you your heart's desire and crown all your plans with success so that with joy we can hail your victory and draw up our ranks in the name of our God. May Yahweh grant all your petitions. Now I know that Yahweh gives victory to his anointed. He will respond from his holy heavens with great deeds of victory from his right hand. Some call on chariots, some call on horses, but we call on the name of Yahweh our God. They will crumple and fall while we stand upright and firm. Yahweh, save the king, answer us when we call. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew, a Holy Gospel according to Matthew 10, verses 16 to 33. Look, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves, so becoming as snakes and yet innocent as doves. Missionaries will be persecuted. Be prepared for people to hand you over to Sanhedrins and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as evidence to them and to the Gentiles that when you are handed over do not worry about how to speak or what to say. What you are to say will be given to you when the time comes, because it is not you who will be speaking. The spirit of your father will be speaking in you. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will come forward against their parents and have them put to death. You will be universally hated on account of my name, but everyone who stands firm to the end will be saved. If they persecute you in one town, take refuge in the next. And if they persecute you in that, take refuge in another. In truth, I tell you, you will not have gone the round of towns in Israel before the Son of Man comes. Disciple is not superior to teacher, nor slave to master. It is enough for disciple 
to grow to be like teacher and slave like master. If they have called the master of the house Belzebul, how much more the members of his household? Open and fearless speech. So do not be afraid of them. Everything now covered up will be uncovered and everything now hidden will be made clear what i say to you in the dark tell in the daylight what you hear in whispers proclaim from the housetops do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny, and yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing? Why, every hair on your head has been counted, so there's no need to be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So, if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of human beings, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of human beings, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That's only 22 minutes. It's not so much reading as usual, is it? Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I'm sending you blessings, prayers for healing, and... Enjoy the rest of your day or evening and be happy and joyful and the peace of Jesus come to you now. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye.